I'm pleased to join you today at the virtual launch of the program's extension of the European Union support to higher education in ASEAN region, EU SHARE. 300 students will benefit from new intra-ASEAN scholarships by the end of 2022. And I'm convinced that the two-year extension of SHARE would take us further in building the ASEAN higher education space and fostering the uh, leaders and work workforce of uh, tomorrow uh, toward greater socioeconomic growth and recovery across the ASEAN region. SHARE is the largest higher education cooperation program underway in ASEAN. His Excellency, Mr. Igor Drismans, European Union Ambassador to ASEAN. His Excellency, Mr. Kung Fu, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for the ASEAN Sociocultural Community. Dr. Aldrin uh, Darila, Commissioner, Commission on Higher Education of the Philippines. Dr. Yang Mi Eng, Executive Director of the ASEAN Foundation. Mr. Darren McDermott, Chair Team Leader, Media Colleagues, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen. Good afternoon. Today, we are gathering here on the occasion of the Share Policy Dialogue 12 to be convened for the next three days with the theme of creating a resilient and sustainable ASEAN higher education space. This three-day policy dialogue provides a valuable opportunity to engage key stakeholders from the ASEAN higher education community. This will be the second Share Policy Dialogue to be held fully online due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We are honored to have the presence of the European Union Ambassador to ASEAN, His Excellency, Mr. Igor Drismans, to open this event with his welcome message. Please join me in welcoming His Excellency, Mr. Igor Drismans. Thank you very much. Um, His Excellency, Dr. Kung Fok, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for the ASEAN Social Cultural Community, Dr. Yang Mi Eng, Executive Director of the ASEAN Foundation, Mr. Darren McDermott, Team Leader of the SHARE Program and members of the SHARE Program Consortium, uh, colleagues from the ASEAN Secretariat, especially the Education, Youth and Sports uh, Divisions, some ED SHARE focal points, uh, ASEAN and EU higher education experts and representatives from higher education institutions, students and scholars. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to the launch event of the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility and the first webinar series of the Share Policy Dialogue 12. I'm very pleased to be able to meet you virtually today amidst the COVID-19 pandemic that strikes us everywhere. I know the pandemic is on the minds of many and I do hope that you and your loved ones keep safe in these difficult times. As you know, SHARE is our flagship program with ASEAN in the field of higher education and has been in operation since 2015. And um, as we announced earlier this year, and as you could see in the introductory video, I'm very happy that the SHARE program has been extended to the end of 2022. In this respect, I would like to convey my sincerest thanks to the ASEAN Secretariat and some ED for their support in the extension of the program. The European Union has committed an additional budget of 5 million euro for this extension, on top of the initial funding of 10 million euro. The extension period will continue to provide support for the harmonization and internationalization of ASEAN higher education. The program will also support the creation of a sustainable ASEAN higher education space, drawing lessons from the European experience of the Erasmus program and the Bologna process. The EU has put human development, in particular education, at the heart of our partnership with ASEAN. We would like to ensure youth and women are not only included, but also empowered. Higher education students have always been an important element in our relationship because they play essential roles in the future and indeed the present of our two regions. The SHARE program contributes to the people-to-people -people connectivity between our two very diverse regions. We hope that intra-ASEAN student mobility will intensify and scale up. 
when I think about the modest start of the Erasmus scholarships in Europe in 1987, we see how quickly it has become so popular with now more than 9 million people having participated in the Erasmus program. So I'm sure there's a bright future for ASEAN student mobility. I'm pleased to hear the formation and official launch of the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility. Congratulations. And I trust that the working group will act as a conduit to facilitate the transfer of ownership of the shared program outcomes to the ASEAN community after the program ends. We take note of the important steps made towards the ownership and sustainability of SHARE's work with the incorporation of its result areas into the higher education components of the ASEAN Work Plan on Education 2021 to 2025. We also acknowledge the collaborative efforts by the SHARE program and the Education Youth and Sport Division of the ASEAN Secretariat in designing the Policy Dialogue 12. Now, let me just wish you a great success with this policy uh, dialogue 12 and a very good afternoon to everybody. Thank you very much. We are now very pleased to welcome Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for the ASEAN Sociocultural Community, His Excellency, Mr. Kung Fok, to give his welcome remarks. Yes, G Kung Fok, allow me to hand over the word to you, please. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency Igor Trisman, uh, European uh, Union Ambassador to ASEAN, uh, Dr. Adrin Darelek, uh, Commissioner of the Commission on Higher Education in the Philippines, Dr. Yang Mian, uh, Executive Director of the ASEAN Foundations, uh, Mr. Darren uh, Madumot, uh, Team Leader of the EU Share Programs, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, very good afternoon. I'm delighted to welcome all of you to the uh, 12 uh, share policy dialogue focused on uh, creating a resilient and sustainable ASEAN higher education space. I'm pleased to see diverse uh, education stakeholders and ex uh, experts uh, gathered from across ASEAN to discuss uh, emerging development and innovation in higher education. Uh, today is a especially momentous occasion as this event also uh, officiate the launch of the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility 2025. I therefore congratulate the ASEAN uh, Senior Official Meetings on Education, uh, ASEAN Secretariat, ASEAN Foundation and SHARE programs on the launch of this uh, working group. Uh, I wish the working group all the best as it plays a very important role in facilitating transfer of ownership of the SHARE programs outcomes to ASEAN. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a study have shown that countries with greater proportion of educated graduates in the labor force have greater productivity and increased capacities to adapt technologies and to innovate. Uh, cognizant of this, uh, ASEAN leaders adopted the Kuala Lumpur Declaration on Higher Education during the 27 ASEAN Summit in 2015. The declaration acknowledged higher education uh, as one of the catalysts in accelerating ASEAN economic, political, and social cultural uh, development agenda. The Kuala Lumpur Declaration also underlined ASEAN vision and commitment in building an innovation driven ASEAN communities. Uh, with strengthened human resources and regional identity through the creation of a common higher education space. Uh, expectantly, uh, ASEAN higher education uh, space will promote increasing levels of internationalizations, harmonizations, innovations, and partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, in this globalized world, uh, internationalizations of higher education has become a necessary means to improve the quality of education, uh, as well as to produce human resources that are future ready competitive and prepare for international workplace. Home to more than 7,000 universities and around 12 million students, ASEAN has enormous potential in acceler accelerating its development and productivity uh, if we can develop our human resources aptly. Uh, promoting internationalized and quality uh, higher education is therefore vital, uh, particularly amid the COVID-19 pandemic uh, to support ASEAN community building and economic recovery in the long term. Uh, taking this uh, into consideration, the three-day policy uh, dialogue has been uh, designed to strengthen cooperation between regional organizations and community of higher education practitioners uh, to coordinate initiatives on equitable, inclusive, and quality internationalization. The uh, formation of the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility is also expected to support the effort on strengthening an ASEAN higher education uh, system through developing strategies to rely ASEAN higher education space 
for greater people-to-people -people, uh, connectivity and knowledge transfer across ASEAN. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to thank the uh, European Union for their continuous support uh, to fostering the creation of a knowledge-based society and enhancing the region competitiveness through higher education through the EU share programs. I commend the significant stride made toward the ownership and sustainability of share work uh, with the inclusion of its result areas into the ASEAN Work Plan on Education 2021-2025. I'm delighted to note that EU share will be providing technical and operational advisory support to the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility up to the end of its extension in 2022. Our presentation also goes to the ASEAN Foundation, who will serve as co-chair of the working group alongside the ASEAN Secretariat. I look forward to fruitful discussion in the next two days. I trust that this policy dialogue will facilitate uh, a rewarding exchange of insight and experiences from uh, important stakeholders in the ASEAN higher education sector. I would also like to wish the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility a successful inaugural uh, meeting uh, later today. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Now we will invite Mr. Dan McDermott, the team leader of the SHARE program, to also say a few words this afternoon. Mr. McDermott, stage is yours. Thank you very much, Uni. His Excellency, Mr. Igor Driesmans, Ambassador of the EU to ASEAN, His Excellency Kung Fook, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for the ASEAN Social Cultural Community, Dr. Aldrin A. Darilag, Commission, Commissioner of the Commission on Higher Education of the Philippines. Dr. Yang Mi Eng, Executive Director of the ASEAN Foundation. Distinguished representatives of ASEAN member states, participants, guests, and ladies and gentlemen of the ASEAN and EU higher education communities. I'm very pleased to welcome you to the Support to Higher Education in the ASEAN Region Policy Dialogue and the first such event of the SHARE Extension following the resumption of its work with ASEAN by agreement between the ASEAN Secretariat and the European Commission until the end of 2022. The support to higher education in the ASEAN re region, otherwise known as the SHARE program, is the European Union's flagship higher education program with ASEAN. The program is implemented by a consortium comprised of the British Council, the Day A A Day, the ENQA and NOFIC, and its result areas encompass policy dialogue qualifications frameworks, quality assurance, credit transfer systems, and student mobility scholarships. Since 2015, SHARE has worked alongside the ASEAN Secretariat to strengthen regional cooperation, enhance the quality, regional competitiveness, and internationalization of ASEAN higher education institutions and students. The extension of the SHARE program enables it to provide technical assistance to the ASEAN Secretariat and regional stakeholders in their implementation of the ASEAN Work Plan on Education 2021 to 2025, which was adopted by ASEAN Education Ministers at their recent meeting on May 31st, 2021. As a key sector for the ASEAN region, higher education is incorporated in the Work Plan through Outcome 3, Enhanced Regional Capacity in Higher Education as part of Lifelong Learning Provision, including the harmonization of ASEAN higher education and specifically in the implementation of activities of output 3.2, sustained and strengthened ASEAN capacity in higher education harmonization through strategies, mechanisms, and scholarship provision. The first in this series of SHARE policy dialogues and the 12th in the history of the SHARE program provides a valuable opportunity for discussion amongst key stakeholders from the ASEAN higher education community at a pivotal time for the region and for higher education worldwide. This will be the second share policy dialogue to be held fully online while co the COVID-19 pande pandemic continues to take its toll on our societies and their communities. Our thoughts are with those who have lost loved ones and suffered as a consequence of the virus. The pandemic continues to disrupt higher education institutions, students and their internationalization activities, but it's valuable to reflect on the adaptation and resilience demonstrated by ASEAN education systems, higher education institutions, and their students since the World Health Organization declared the pandemic. It's also important to chart the course ahead to ensure the continued resilience and sustainability of an ASEAN higher education space. Now more than ever, it is essential that we promote and strengthen quality international education. 
Within this new context, the 12th Share a Policy Dialogue has been designed in partnership with the ASEAN Secretariat's Education, Youth and Sports Division and other stakeholders. And it's an initiation of the process of transferring shares result areas to the ASEAN community and its associated entities. As such, the objectives of this 12th Share Policy Dialogue are as follows. To officially launch the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility and initiate its inaugural meetings. To convene and engage regional partners and stakeholders to affirm the commitments on Outcome 3 and Output 3.2 of the ASEAN Education Work Plan 2021 to 2025. To identify emerging developments and innovations facilitating the internationalization of ASEAN higher education and development of an ASEAN branded scholarship. And to strengthen cooperation between regional organizations and communities of higher education practitioners to advance and coordinate initiatives on the provision of equitable inclusive, diverse, and quality internationalization. Over the course of the next three days, we invite you to listen to our keynote speakers and engage with our panelists as they discuss the creation of a resilient, sustainable, and shared ASEAN higher education space. We hope you enjoy the forthcoming sessions of the Share Policy Dialogue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Darren McDermott. We now come to the special feature of Share Policy Dialogue 12, that is the official launch of the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility 2025. We will hear launch remarks delivered on this opportunity from the Commission on Higher Education of the Philippines, from co-chairs of the Working Group, as well as from Share Program as a technical and operational advisor to the Working Group. Allow me to invite Dr. Aldrin a. Dari Lok, Commissioner, Commission on Higher Education of the Philippines, to deliver his launch remarks. Mr. Mr. Darila, if I can interrupt your speech, please. I think you forgot to unmute your microphone, perhaps. Okay, um, we apologize for the technical glitch that you just saw just now. Now I would like to proceed and uh, as the co-chair of the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility 2025, let's hear a launch message from Dr. Yang Mi Eng, the ASEAN Foundation Executive Director. Dr. Yang, may I please invite you to come on stage, please? Thank you, everyone. Uh, EU Ambassador to ASEAN, His Excellency Mr. Igor Dusman, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN, His Excellency Mr. Hung, uh, Kung Fook, Dr. Adrian Derilek, Commissioner, Commission of Higher Education Philippines, Share Team Leader, Mr. Darren McDiman, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my uh, great pleasure to gather here and celebrate the launch of the ASEAN Working Group 
on Higher Education Mobility 2025. I'm very proud to be part of this working group, which will play a key role in contributing to ASEAN visions to creating people-centered ASEAN community in the higher education area. Higher education is an inseparable part of our youth lifelong learning journey. It is a stage that provides crucial momentum for our youth to grow their ideas, develop their talents and flourish even further. In post pandemic era, ASEAN's higher education that is not only excellent, but also inclusive will ensure that we can bring forth a generation of future leaders who are innovative and resilient. In that sense, the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility 2025 has committed itself to achieve this goal by working towards enhancing inter-regional and cross-regional capacity building in higher education area. At ASEAN Foundation, we have worked with various partners to deliver initiatives that contribute in equipping our youth with 21st century skills, helping them to unleash their potentials in the last 23 years. Our initiatives has been geared towards building the digital skills of our youth and boosting their mobility, while at the same time, deepening their appreciations for ASEAN. Together, let's make this first meeting the first essential step of a journey of harmonizations that this working group will embark on in, on it and empowering higher education in ASEAN with the partnerships and support from EU share. So I look forward to having a productive partnerships and exchange of knowledge with all of you. Thank you very much. And uh, I think this is the beginning of the journey of our collaborations. So I'm looking forward to a productive discussion uh, these few days. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Yang, for your message. As the technical and operational advisor to the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility 2025, I would like now to invite the SHARE program team leader, Mr. Darren McDermott, to also make his launch remarks. Mr. McDermott, please. Uh, Mr. McDermott, I think uh, you have to turn on your microphone. My sincere apologies, Uni, and thank you for the reminder. His Excellency, Mr. Igor Driesmans, Ambassador of the EU to ASEAN. His Excellency, Kung Folk, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN for the ASEAN Sociocultural Community. Dr. Aldrin A. Darilag, Commissioner of the Commission of Higher Education in the Philippines. Dr. Yang Mi Eng, Executive Director of the ASEAN Foundation, distinguished representatives of ASEAN member states, participants, guests, and ladies and gentlemen of the ASEAN and EU higher education communities. On behalf of the SHARE program, I would like to extend our congratulations to the ASEAN Secretariat's Education, Youth and Sports Division, the ASEAN Foundation, senior officials from ASEAN member state ministries of education and ministries of higher education, and regional stakeholder entities and organizations on the establishment of the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education. Today marks a culmination of the process of establishing the Working Group, but also a starting point for the comprehensive discussions and consensus building to come, to develop a cohesive roadmap to realize and implement an ASEAN higher education space for greater people-to-people -people connectivity and the augmentation of an ASEAN identity. This is an important initiative which brings together the depth and breadth of the ASEAN higher education community and their partners. The SHARE program stands ready to provide comprehensive technical and operational support to the working group for the remainder of our program. And we look forward very much to working together on our shared goals. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McDermott. This ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility 2025 has the objectives of broadening the remit 
of ASEAN Ad Hoc Working Group on Higher Education Mobility, deliberating, deliberating on, on assessing, assessing and transferring the ownership, ownership of the ASEAN, of the ASEAN credit, credit transfer system, transfer system. And, developing and developing a policy, a policy about, about to realize, to realize and and impact the ASEAN, ASEAN higher education. Higher education. The working, the working group 2025 is chaired by the ASEAN and the ASEAN Foundation. The ASEAN Foundation. Foundation. Share program, Share program serves, serves as a technical, as a technical and operational and advisor, advisor to the working group until 2022. 2022. Let's get to know the, members, to know of the members of the ASEAN Group on Higher Education Mobility 2025. 2025. Let's, From Brunei 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 Salam. Salam. Hajah and his Hajjah in Haji From Cambodia, Dr. Dr. Bunle. Bunle. From Indonesia, From Indonesia. Professor, Professor Aris Junaidi. Junaidi. From Lao PDR, Lau PDR. Mr. Mr. Aya Aya Machang. Machang. From Malaysia, From Malaysia. Professor, Professor Dr. Dr. Robia, Robia Bintiwisunus. From Myanmar, From Myanmar. Dr. Dr. Yin Yin Yo Yo Tu. Tu. From the From Philippines, Philippines. Tony Lili Lili Frida, Frida M. M. Mila. Mila. From Singapore, From Singapore. Ms. Ms. Lim, Lim Shilili. Shilili. From, From Thailand, Mr. Mr. Som Som Kiat Kiat Kamol Kamol Kamol. Kamol. From, Vietnam, From Vietnam, Professor, Professor Dr. Dr. Nguyen Nguyen Tu, 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 tu. I would like to congratulate the formation of the ASEAN, of the ASEAN working, group working Group on Higher on Education Mobility 2025. And let us together wish all the best to the working group in carrying out the roles and responsibilities to support the harmonized ASEAN higher education space. Before we close this session, I would like to invite Ambassador Igor Drismans, DSG Kung Fu, Dr. Aldrin Darilak, Dr. Yang Mi Eng and Mr. Darren McDermott to turn on their videos for a group photo. I'll wait until I have everyone here. Right. On three, then one of our team members will click the camera. One, two, three. Yeah, thank you very much, excellencies, distinguished speakers. That marks the close of this session. Even though we have concluded this opening ceremony, there will be a lot coming in this policy dialogue 12 Participants, ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned here as the next session will commence shortly. Thank you very much again for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of the event and stay safe. Have a good day. And thank you very much and welcome everyone to the first panel discussion of Share Policy Dialogue 12. The topic for this session is engaging regional partners for a harmonized ASEAN higher education space. And we're very pleased uh, to welcome four senior regional stakeholders to this session. Uh, allow me to introduce the session chair and moderator, Mr. Mikhail Horig, head of division for the strategic planning at the Day A Day in Bonn. Uh, he's a senior member uh, of the, the SHARE Consortium and I'm pleased to say has been involved uh, with the SHARE Consortium even since its planning stages. So uh, we're very pleased to, to have him here today. Uh, Mikhail uh, is head of division um, and he supervises uh, the work of five sections at the Day A Day headquarters in Bonn. Higher education policy, monitoring and evaluation, development cooperation, German studies, 
uh, and studies and research. In addition for that, he's responsible for the project unit that deals with the implementation of the day are days digitalization strategy. And having worked at the at European level before, Michael enjoys actively participating in EU funded pro projects. In the context of the SHARE program, Mikkel is an active senior expert in qualifications frameworks. So many thanks for joining us today, Michael, and, and over to you to introduce the session. Thank you. Sorry, Michael, I think we're, we're slightly muted. Um, I can't quite uh, hear you. Okay, this seems to be a, an ongoing um, issue for us. Uh, my apologies uh, on behalf of the SHARE program for this, um, but we should be able to proceed with this shortly. Michael, uh, I've been advised that if you click the, the gear icon um, underneath the screen, and you can adjust the, the settings there. Good morning. Can you hear me now? OK, okay. thank you very much. You're That's welcome. Great. OK, uh, very happy to join you here um, this morning for me from Germany. I'm uh, Michael Hurek. I was introduced by Darren to you, but um, I would like to introduce the panel members of today um, to join me here in this discussion. The topic is um, how do we assess the progress made today on regional higher education harmonization and where do we see the opportunities for greater collaboration um, to strengthen higher education in the ASEAN region. And I'm joined here today by the director for Human Development at the ASEAN Secretariat, Ms. Rodora Barbara, Barbara um, the Executive Director of the ASEAN University Network, Dr. Chotis Dirati Tihiti, um, the Center Director of Simir Raihat, Dr. Romyan Kozaikanond, and a representative from the ASEAN Quality Assurance Network, uh, Mohamed Safer bin Mustafa. Um, before we start with a short input statements, each of them uh, timed to allow for further discussion afterwards. Uh, let me maybe also say that um, this time of um, great uncertainty is also for a project like SHARE and for a endeavor like regional harmonization of higher education quite challenging. So my focus in this discussion uh, afterwards will also be on uh, what does it actually mean? Um, how do we bring these frameworks that are complex and that have been uh, receiving an additional layer um, of complexity by the COVID situation? How do we ensure that um, they function and still uh, remain flexible for these uncertain times? So. Without further ado, I would like to call upon Ms. Rodora Babran, um, the Director of the Human Development Unit in the ASEAN Secretariat, to give her introductory remarks. A very good uh, afternoon to all our uh, distinguished uh, delegates and panelists, and uh, good morning, Michelle, to your part of the world. So we will be, I will be using uh, a few slides for this uh, brief presentation. I, I hope everyone can hear me uh, clearly. Okay, so while my presentation is uh, being um, shown now, 
let me just uh, express uh, my appreciation to the EU chair for the invitation to participate in the session one of this uh, 12th policy dialogue focused on engaging regional partners for a harmonized ASEAN higher education space. I would also like to acknowledge and look forward to the fruitful discussion with the panelists in this uh, session. Um, from uh, Senior Raihe, Dr. Romyan, good to see you again. Dr. Choltis, uh, good to see you too. Uh, Mr. Mohamed Jafir bin Mustafa of the ASEAN Qualification Assurance Network. Okay, so if we kindly move to the next slide, please. Okay, so in, in terms of mandate, I would just like to recall that uh, a main purpose, as stated in the ASEAN Charter, um, are contained in Article 1 of the Paragraph 10, states that uh, ASEAN's purpose is to develop human resources through closer cooperation in education and lifelong learning and in science and technology for the empowerment of the peoples of ASEAN and for the strengthening of the ASEAN community. So that the core mandate uh, on human resource development is actually emanating from the highest uh, document or the, the guiding document of uh, ASEAN. Next slide. And uh, the role of higher education is further recognized and galvanized even um, in the Kuala Lumpur Declaration on Higher Education that was adopted during the 27th ASEAN Summit in 2015. In here, higher education is regarded as a catalyst in accelerating ASEAN's economic, political, and sociocultural development agenda. Let me also highlight that the commitments of ASEAN leaders in the declaration include upholding quality of higher education, promotion of ASEAN identity through enhanced intra-ASEAN mobility of students and scholars, and building innovation-driven ASEAN community. Let me also underscore that accomplishing these commitments requires the active involvement of all stakeholders in developing an ASEAN higher education space characterized by increasing levels of internationalization, harmonization, innovation, and partnerships. Next slide. Let me also highlight that in support of this vision laid out in the declaration, the EU SHARE project was launched in 2015 to strengthen regional cooperation and enhance the quality, regional competitiveness, and internationalization of ASEAN higher education institutions and students. So far, the achievements of EU SHARE program includes providing scholarships uh, for over 500 uh, students for intra-ASEAN scholarships, uh, for ASEAN University students, and the new phase will support 300 more students before the end of 2022. Bringing together government officials and key education stakeholders from across ASEAN for policy dialogues on the harmonization of higher education. And beyond that, ASEAN education personnel have enjoyed various study programs, workshops, and trainings in institutions located both in ASEAN and the EU regions. Now, let me also share with you that um, the ASEAN Work Plan on Education 2021 to 2025 has been adopted by the ASEAN Education Ministers just this May. The work plan is underpinned by a lifelong learning framework, which is expected to help the sector rebuild and become more resilient in the face of threats such as the COVID-19. The work plan also encompasses different stages and modalities of education and catering to the needs and context of all learners. So earlier, Michelle was saying, how do we bring in, in this framework, the added complexity brought by this pandemic? And, and so this work plan on education uh, partly addresses that. Next slide, let me also highlight that on higher education, the work plan aims to achieve enhanced regional capacities in higher education as part of lifelong learning provision, including the harmonization of higher education. The strategies to achieve this include the strengthening the role of higher education institutions in lifelong learning through provision of flexible, innovative, multidisciplinary, cross-border education and research collaboration. The relevant activities could be found in this slide. Apologies that uh, this is uh, quite heavy. Sustaining and uh, strengthening ASEAN capacity in higher education harmonization through the strategies, mechanism and scholarship provision. And therefore, I would like to reiterate 
uh, our appreciation to the EU Share Program for continue, continuing to support ASEAN education sector to achieve the aforementioned priorities, particularly during its extent, extension phase up to 2022. Next slide, please. Now let me also share that uh, the establishment of the ASEAN Working Group on Higher Education Mobility will support uh, the strengthening of uh, capacity of ASEAN higher education sector to establish the ha ASEAN higher education space. And this working group will develop a cohesive roadmap to realize and implement the ASEAN higher education space, which will include the design, ownership, and operationalization of an ASEAN branded scholarships by 2025 and to ensure that the progress made by the SHARE program in creating a common higher education space within the region for the past six years could be sustained. Next slide. Now, um, I'd like to inform that in support uh, to a higher at a stronger and internationalized ASEAN higher education sector, this working group on mobility of higher education and the ensuring quality assurance of higher education among the ASEAN plus three countries or APTWG was also established in 2013. So the APTWG aims at strengthening and facilitating policy dialogue, coordination, collaboration, and promotion of quality assurance and mobility of higher education amongst the ASEAN plus three countries with an emphasis on strategies and activities related to the development of the credit transfer system and harmonization of academic standards. Let me share as well that so far this APTWG has uh, achieved several milestones, such as the development of the APT guidelines on student exchanges and mobility, which was adopted at the third APT education ministers meeting. Uh, they also uh, submitted annual monitoring of student exchanges and mobility in the ASEAN Plus 3 region. They developed the APT guidelines on transcripts and supplemental documents for academic records of exchange students, uh, which was adopted at the fourth ASEAN Plus 3 education ministers meeting, and uh, also developed the guide on making information available online to promote student mobility in the ASEAN Plus 3 region, which is currently being piloted. I wish to further share that the eighth APTWG meeting last November was dedicated to assess the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic to the ASEAN plus three higher education sector. The Republic of Korea initiated the development of joint guidelines for new forms of mobility in higher education among the ASEAN plus three countries, which aims to increase mutual understanding by sharing experiences around online education in the APT region, establish an institutional foundation to enable new forms of higher education cooperation in the APT region, and ensure students broader education opportunities and fair recognition of their international education experience. So hang in there. I'm about to close my, uh, my presentation. Let me just uh, highlight some of the key takeaways that I wish to impart before I uh, close. Uh, it's very important that collaboration, synergy, and cohesive efforts between and among all stakeholders in, in the region is uh, achieved in order to harmonize higher education, ensure inclusivity, synergy, and meaningful engagement of all relevant stakeholders, as well as the ability to work across platforms and mechanisms and within and beyond the region. Let me also underline that commitments and policy actions from ASEAN member states are vital to ensure that ASEAN can sustain the gains uh, achieved so far with the EU share as well as the APTWG and other relevant initiatives. Finally, let me highlight the need for ASEAN member states and partners to double down on investments in education, including in higher education harmonization, internationalization and scholarships, especially as it will help the region's post-pandemic recovery. So I wish to conclude uh, my presentation and again, I express my appreciation to the EU share for its continued support in strengthening the ASEAN higher education sector and the invitation to participate in this discussion. Thank you very much. Over to you, Michelle. Before we um, come to um, questions from my side, I would suggest that we listen to the other speakers. Um, I hope that um, next on the list is uh, Dorian Kozai-Kanon from Simir Raihat. I hope she's also joining the technical um, 
platform at this moment so she can start her presentation. There she is. A very welcome. Um, greetings to Bangkok, I assume. Um, please, the floor is yours for a presentation for Simia Rai Hat. Thank you very much, um, Mikhail, for your kind introduction and a uh, warm from Thailand to all of you. Um, I uh, have organized my talk into three parts. Next slide, please. I organized my talk into three parts. Um, first, uh, I would paint the picture of the future of the higher education in the Simio region. And then I would look back into the harmonization efforts in your right head. Uh, and the last part, I would like to propose the core redefining of the regional common space of higher education education for harmonization. Next slide, please. Um, as educators, uh, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, it is becoming clearer that we are living in the VUCA world. Things are not as easily predictable as it used to be. And on top of it, we also face with the mega trends. Actually, Pricewaterhouse in 2016 has identified key mega trends of the rise of technology and digitalization, demographic change, climate and environmental crisis, global economic power shift, as well as the increased inequality due to the urban uh, urbanization. However, with the COVID-19 pandemic, the Future Tales Lab in 2021 has forecasted that the impact of the COVID-19 would be very deep and it would be lasting longer than expected. It will affect how we live, how we play, how we move, or how we travel, how we sustain our lives and living. And most importantly, and this is what is related to us, how we learn and how we work. It is highlighted um, that uh, the learning, the, uh, the health and safety preparedness for the sustainable living would be at the top of our priority. In particular for learning and working, needs, it needs to be more resilient, agile and be able to adapt quickly to the needs of learners as things will move and change quicker and with new technology advancement playing more important roles in our lives. Next, please. For the future of higher gen um, in similar gen, we are facing multiple critical questions of one, what would the classroom be like if the digitalization is here to stay? Um, and online learning new norm. Would classroom need to be transformed into a spirit, uh, cooperative learning, co-creation and social skill? And with that, uh, how would the lecturer's role would change? Should it be that we are like a coach or a mentor or facilitator who can work well with the AI learning, co-creation and uh, social skill cultivation? How would the duration of the learning would be? whether we still have the degree, or would it be more of the personalized and customized learning? What role would the leadership have in leading this change? What are their qualities? And last but not the least, you know, what is the, um, what about the financing models of the universities and higher education? This, this question, I, I, I think, has longer list, and we need to, and we don't really have a, have a clear answer to that. But with our experience with COVID-19, disruption. We were forced to realization and it would be here to stay with us as our next new normal. But we must not forget that within the Simio region, there are great diversity and inequality. How do we ensure that digitalization and promote equity and sense of belongings? In our reality, um, is evidence among different countries and within the country itself. In a way, harmonization process in the past, in some aspect, contributing to and working towards bridging this inequality gap. The last point to think why, what are the purpose of the higher education and harmonization for the future? After we have been through all this disruption and pandemic, is it time for us to redefine what is harmonization? Four points can be highlighted and is that we need to prepare the learners for the careers, and I emphasize the S with the career. With um, the change of the future world of work, 
gigs economy, digital nomads. We are not preparing our learners for one single career anymore. We are preparing them for the multiple careers. Second, we groom our learners for future readiness. They should be resilient, flexible, and be able to adapt quickly to change. Third, they should have in position and close minds and know how to learn, cultivated with a quality of the lifelong learner. Last, the learners must social emotional skills sufficiently to create a sustainable livelihood and living with a sense of regional and global citizenship. Next slide, please. Now, if you look back to the if we look back to the Samuel Reihet's efforts in creating common space in higher education, um, the 45th Southeast Asian Minister of Education Council meeting has endorsed the work of a structure framework for regional integration education in Southeast Asia, the road towards a common space for 2008 to 2014. And this is even before the ASEAN community come into place in 2015. We to highlight two efforts. One is the establishment of ARCAN is here with us today and they will talk about it. And then another is the development of the ASEAN credit transfer system. Next, please. The approach that the Simiore had took was that we work with the governments based on the priorities, commitments, and readiness of organization of higher education of countries. The role of Seymour Rayhead is a facilitator, bringing in the authorities and stakeholders to discuss and create the architect for the common space. For the credit transfer system, we use the mobility to lead the development of the credit transfer process. Aims or ability for students program should be seen as a learning and experimental space for credit transfer and recognition. It also can be seen as an area where university in the region work together to build their understanding of each other's system, improve and harmonize their system, and trust is also being built. In doing so, Simul Reihet is promoting of more comparable and compatible higher education in the region. It should be stressed that uh, although the credit transfer is a requirement, there is no single platform for mobility, nor fixed credit transfer system. Instead, the participating university would discuss and agree among themselves on the credit transfer system and recognition to be used. And for the past 12 years, there are more, five, more than 5,000 alumni participated from 78 universities and nine countries. Next, please. I would like to mention a little bit about the Simeo Reihet's next strategic plan. Um, I don't think the PowerPoint is showing. Next, please. Is it showing? Okay, I would continue. I would like to mention a little about the Simeo Reihet's next strategic plan. Um, Right had sets our strategy to continue our work in alignment with CMO priority as we six, which is on harmonization of higher education and research. At the same time, we are placing SDGs, especially but not limited to SDG four, as our very high priority. Next, please, if I may have the slide. Don't see the slide. Well, I would keep on going. Um, for the next strategic plan, has made a strategic shift towards enhancing higher education for sustainable future of the Seminole right region. Among all the four strategic areas, we have reprioritized our work more on the policy dialogue. We see that policy dialogue is needed to build the understanding and be able to make a strategic shift quickly responding to the, the rapid change um, that we are facing. We would also emphasize the importance of the leadership programs, not just seeing it as a capacity building, but seeing it more like a sharing of the collective intelligence. All of this would translate into the knowledge maximization, accumulation of priority choices for leaders of higher education. Considering the future of higher education in the VUCA world, which nobody can see crystal clear of what is going to be like, I strongly believe that the deeper collaboration is much needed to sail through all these disruptions. 
Our region is resourceful. Also, we are aware that we are diverse with existing inequalities, but we are rich in our knowledge and also tea. And this is the greatest essence embedded in all of us. Also, we also have great partners like EU Chair, AD, UNESCO, British Council, NUFIC, and so on and so forth. At the time, we should together revisit and broaden the regional common space in higher education. We have to make sure that the common space stays relevant to the regional needs of the future higher education. We should focus on a closer collaboration among various stakeholders within the region to maximize our synergy and collective intelligence. We should harmonize, I, I emphasize, the shared goals and shared visions. For us, it is very clear, Simeo Raihet is promoting and empowering the women and agile higher education whose learners would be able to live and work in and also for us, inclusivity, equity, and creation of the sense of belonging would be at its core. So this calling for flexible learning and rapid change in higher education, we should avoid one or one harmonized system. So it is true that harmonized stems may help to facilitate internationalization higher education, which creates great, but it is also our role to ensure that these systems would be able to embrace universities in all of the countries and leaving no one really behind. We also have a role to ensure that these harmonization of the systems enhance the quality of the learning in accordance with the requirements. Ladies and gentlemen, well, I think this is time to have the collective intelligence Get a new common space in higher education. But working together can create a better learning and more. For the yes, now now we are back live. Thank you very much. Uh, although the slides were missing at the end, um, we were very well able to follow your your line of argument, and um, I really applaud and and. Um, share your vision that uh, the sustainable development goals play a major role in the shaping of our activities and our work both in terms of harmonization within the region as also with global collaboration and um, we might come back to that point um, at, in the discussion um, but for the time being i would like to thank you for your vision for outlining the vision of simio Raihat. And would now like to uh, shift the focus a little bit more to the universities in uh, ASEAN with uh, Dr. Choltis, who is the executive director of the ASEAN University Network, which is uh, a, a body direct, an organization directly integrated in the ASEAN framework, but uh, still also uh, representative for the university sector in the region. Dr. Choltis, welcome also to Bangkok, I assume. Um, and um, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Mikhail. You hear me all right? Good. The sound is good. All right. I, I, I presume that you all hear me all right. Um, Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, I like to uh, to express uh, on behalf of the, the ASEAN University Network, our gratitude to the EU share for, uh, for asking the, the AUN to join this uh, webinar of the EU share on engaging the, the regional partners for a harmonized ASEAN higher education space. Um, I like 
to present the I think uh, I have only one slide um, I suppose I have to to share it myself right okay I think it's, it's on now um, I, I suppose, I hope you see it, okay? Right, I have only one slide, uh, which is to answer the, the main question on what is the current state of the harmonized ASEAN higher education space? And then, what would be the, uh, the possible uh, steps forward in in going for more uh, harmonized uh, higher education in ASEAN. I uh, what I, I I I show you here is the the main concerns from the university's perspective which can be summed up into three main major points uh, starting with the uh, number one from the university perspective our main concern is on the on the graduate employability and how can students um, make an impact? Uh, sorry for the misspelling. How can our students and graduates make an impact on society? Um, uh, Dr. Lom Yen, for example, um, mentioned the 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 SDGs, those are the impacts that we we would like to see our next generation's uh, graduates uh, contributing. The, the second concern from the university perspective is how to how to deliver the the the, the proper education as well as how to uh, facilitate uh, a good mobility uh, within the, the context of the current disruption. And by doing so, how could we also look after the, the risks, all the risks, and how, how could we together look after the, the well-being of not only the students, but also all uh, uh, people and stakeholders involved in the education provision that we uh, provide, provide. And then the, the third major concern from the university perspective is uh, the, 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 the classic item that stay with us since the start of the ASEAN University Network 25 years ago, uh, which is how could we advance on the cross-border research collaboration. Um, from the university perspective, we, we provided uh, a, a four, four points uh, to move forward. Uh, sum up in these four, four suggestions. Um, first of all, university industry partnership. This is, this is a topic that everyone know, knows already. Secondly is the, uh, this second point is at the heart of of 
our universities, presidents, rectors, and vice chancellor as of now, uh, which is uh, we, we need to provide the lifelong learning in an interdisciplinary and flexible uh, curriculum design. Perhaps, perhaps the AUN could help in collaboration with other partners, uh, including the, the EU, the UK, the Korean, the, uh, the Japanese, the Chinese, the, the Indian universities, and other partners that, that we are engaging with in our global engagement map. How we could uh, provide the, the lifelong, lifelong learning. I'm glad to hear that, um, as mentioned by uh, uh, Rodora, that in the uh, ASEAN work plan announced in May, lifelong learning is one of the issues that the ASEAN, ASEAN and ASEAN Secretariat emphasize. This is a very good news. It fitted well with what at the moment, at the moment, I mean, the, the AUN presidents, rectors, and vice chancellor met uh, uh, two weeks ago to discuss this issue. And, and this issue are uh, summarized here that I presented to you. These are the hot issue that our presidents, rectors, and vice chancellor are talking about as of now. Not only talking about, but they are doing it. And AUN is doing it. And, and the rest of the suggestions is on the, the resource sharing, the access to technology, and also how we could uh, communicate, link, and promote our research partnership beyond the national border. Um, thank you very much. That's all for me, Mikael. Back to you, Mikael. Yes, thank you very much, Joltis, um, for providing this perspective for AUN. And last but not least, I would like to ask uh, my colleague from the ASEAN Quality Assurance Network, uh, Mohammad Safir bin Mustafa, to share his view and the view of his organization with us this afternoon. Mohammad. You seem muted as well again. Please try changing the settings for your input. It's the little wheel um, on the bottom of uh, underneath the policy dialogue screen. It worked with me previously. Testing one, two, three. Thank you very much. Thank God. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Good afternoon to uh, thank you, Michael. Good afternoon to all the uh, distinguished families and everybody uh, joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Muhammad Zafir. I'm representing the Akan on behalf of the president and the uh, executive committee member. Uh, we would like to thank um, the organizer for inviting us and joining us and uh, for us for the opportunity to share on sharing uh, 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 the opportunity for us to share. Uh, some insight from Akan itself. Uh, I think uh, we're going to touch a bit on, uh, might be a very brief uh, information on our uh, role uh, and initiative uh, vis a vis the harmon uh, how in support of uh, harmonized higher education space. Um, next, please. Can can uh, can we sh uh, show the slide? The first line. If not, I just read whatever that I think uh, we have provided in in the in the, in the slide. Uh, first is basically I think I would like to uh, share about the establishment account itself. I think there's uh, involvement. Uh, uh, I think uh, a significant involvement not only by uh, MQA uh, at that time but also by Simiori Head. I think it's the brainchild of. The director at that time, Professor Supachaya Prabhas, on the need of having Akan, and uh, because of uh, her, his idea at that time in 2008, lead to the establishment of Akan, uh, which is uh, which was formally established with the appointment of the executive committee and having uh, uh, the right structure in 2009 in Bangkok. But again, I think uh, I would like to draw. The attention of uh, the current uh, uh, Akan uh, uh, Constitution, which ha was, ha which has been, uh, uh, I mean, amended, uh, I think, last year, on uh, some of the obje objective. Uh, I think the first objective, which is connected to the uh, discussion today, is the 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 objective of Akan is to encourage and support the creation of a harmonized space for higher education and training through quality assurance and good practices. I think this connected to uh, the, 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 with the big agenda of harmonization of in the region. And secondly, about the enhanced and sustained higher education system in the ASEAN region through quality assurance and good practices. I think this also connected to uh, the element of quality as part of the sustainable development uh for for the region uh, for the for the for the society for the people and 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 the significant role of higher education and the quality uh for that purpose and i and and uh achieving this objective is being carried out by our 17 members uh, the, the the number is small but the 17 members are all uh, mandated uh, qa bodies national QA bodies of the asean member state and they are quality assuring most of uh, higher education institution uh, in in the in the ten member state. So even though it's, it's the number is small, but but the 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 effect or the the, the role of this agency in terms of uh, quality assuring uh, the national system uh, is is very very significant. And we hope that by engaging uh, by, by engaging through Akan, we are actually engaging the zone of trust established at the national level uh, and and we are creating a, 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 a framework of uh, connectivity of zone of trust of the national system to the larger regional system and whatever uh, the engagement happen at the Akan level we hope that it can also be cascaded and also contribute to the better uh, improvement of quality assurance uh, intervention at the national level next okay uh, i think um, i'm not sure because uh, the the slide has, uh, i think there's some problem with the slide but uh, i i would like to share on um uh, uh, a new strategic plan of 2020 and 2025 right? there are about uh, five teams Okay, the first team is about uh, strengthening Akan capacity uh, development and competencies as a regional uh, uh, network. That's the first team because I think uh, we are looking into 
the model uh, which is the best practice uh, currently happen in Europe uh, by, uh, carried out by ENCA. Uh, very professional in terms of as, as a regional uh, regional uh, organization so in terms of their uh, cap, uh, cap, uh, their capacities and competencies as a regional agency and also as a financial sustainability we are also looking into uh, team two on a promotion of representation of akan that means recognize akan being recognized as a regional body and also uh, uh, play a significant role as a QA reference uh, for the for, 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 for the region okay and we are looking into uh, the team three uh, number three is on uh, ASEAN coalition framework which is uh, our uh, key document in terms of our uh, our principles for quality assurance similar to the one that uh, Europe has which is the European standard and guideline of quality assurance in higher education the short form in ESG so our uh, for, for ASEAN we have ACAP in Europe they have ESG so 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 we hope that by having this uh, uh, I mean uh, this this uh, key document we can uh, promote uh, at, uh, between uh, our members a uh, good uh, a good uh, practices in terms of quality assurance and other thing is about um, I think when we have a key document we need to make sure it is they, they are implemented so team four for our strategic plan is basically to look to to, to look to ensure that uh, our members uh, are sort of showing their, their adherence to the whatever that we 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 prescribe or we 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 uh, announce or we we uh, outline in the uh, ACAF document, and of course uh, the team five of our strategic planning is about capacity building. Uh, whenever that we have a big agenda in terms of having ACAF event or having a, a agency review, the the most important thing is about capacity of our members, and we hope that. By having this capacity building of our members, we can cooperate uh, with other agencies, not only in ASEAN but also in other region in Europe, in uh, maybe in America and whatsoever. And and because of this, I think, because of having this continuous communication and engagement in quality, uh, there will be continuous improvement uh, to the members and also to the uh, national system that they, they they are entrusted to. Thanks. So this is basically um, um, again uh, the fourth, uh, the the third slide is about ACAF. Uh, I just want to, uh, to 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 highlight that we have it uh, the first publication in 2016, and uh, the second publication is on the guideline of uh, the review on uh, the, the the agency review on ACAF, and uh, the 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 second publication uh, we have it uh, in collaboration with uh, under share. And this is key document whereby we hope that we can implement ACAF uh, and promote it uh, to be implemented by our members. Okay. So next is I think uh, the first slide. I'm not sure because I, whether it's it's it's, it's been shown there. Uh, I just would highlight that um, uh, since 2011, we've been engaging with our uh, uh, European partner in terms of capacity building. Uh, the first phase is, I think, the ASEAN QA project. Uh, they, are two, they were two phases. Uh, the first one is between 2011 and 2013, and the second one is 2014 and 2017. I think at that time, we don't have a CAF. So uh, we mostly being guided for whatever is implemented in Europe. And then we have several, uh, I mean, uh, expert uh, from Europe uh, uh, sharing their best practices so we at that time I think during the ASEAN QA project the focus is basically on the strengthening of IQA with the involvement of ACAN at that time but whenever that uh, we have ACAF uh, there's a project uh, under SHARE where we are doing pilot project of agency review I think the first one is 2017 and 2019 
and later on currently we are looking into the second review of 2020 and 2022 and i would like to highlight this when when uh, why is this 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 exercise is very significant even though this is just saying that this is our agency review uh, firstly because it need collaboration by many uh, parties not only uh, at the uh, at the asean level akan uh, AUN, Simeri Head is also involved at the European level, uh, DAAD, British Council and, 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 and ANCA. And, and I think other than doing the review itself, there are many other things that happen. Capacity building, uh, policy dialogue, uh, reviewing where the, the, the document uh, has been put in proper context and also addressing the diversity at the ASEAN level. And, and I think uh, the rich engagement uh, over the time uh, since 2011 and till now, uh, we learn a lot, we improvise a lot. And I think uh, when if we continue with this, basically when you have this ACAF, this is the thing that I think will we, we, we'll continue to sustain the policy dialogue, the quality dialogue and operational dialogue. And most importantly is basically the opportunity to make ACAF agile and uh, flexible to address um, ever-changing context and also challenges over the time. I think with that note, I think, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mohamed. And also thank you for highlighting the importance of partnerships in your presentation. Now we have, uh, we're slightly over time with the input. Um, I promised some questions and, and debate. Maybe one thing that I uh, learned this um, today from, from the session is that one of the answers uh, at least you provide for the learning from the pandemic is that lifelong learning has uh, come up to the um, policy agenda more prominently. Um, maybe maybe uh, to, to, um, to Rodora as a question, um, could you elaborate on the vision for a stronger lifelong framework a little bit more in detail. What does it mean for the individual learner? Uh, what would it mean for policy, uh, for education providers if we focus in, in mm -hmm. ASEAN on lifelong learning? Thank you, Michelle, for that very uh, good. Uh, I hope everyone can clearly uh, hear me. There's no technical glitch on the audio this time. Is it okay? It's perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, as I shared earlier, this lifelong learning is already mandated in the ASEAN Charter. And quite recently, we've had declarations that spelled out uh, lifelong learning, such as the Kuala Lumpur Declaration on Higher Education. And then most recently, this ASEAN Declaration on Human Resources Development for the Changing World of Work. In that declaration, there is more details in terms of what we mean by uh, lifelong learning. So if I can uh, very quickly just walk you through what it uh, tells us about lifelong learning, um, it says that, you know, member states uh, resolve to undertake actions on cultivating lifelong learning culture in societies and raising awareness of youth, workers, and employers on the importance of investing in skills development to adapt to the changing world of work, including in education and training. It also talks about educational systems that promote competencies that prepare for uh, lifelong learning, and also promotion of policies and initiatives for lifelong learning, which encompass key stages of education and training, such as basic education, technical and vocational education and training. In as far as the higher education sector is concerned, this is clarified in the work plan on education, as uh, indicated in the outcome three, on enhancing regional capacity in higher education as part of lifelong learning provision, and uh, under which is output 3.1 on strengthening the role of HEIs in lifelong learning. So what would this mean for individual learners and the education providers? I think for the individual learners, this means we recognize all kinds of learners from all levels of education. This means further expansion of opportunities for continuing learning for every stage of life, an opportunity as well to engage and provide inputs to changes in policy and design of initiatives and programs. For the education providers, on the other hand, this means the need to open up such opportunities to listen and gather inputs and insights from diverse stakeholders, foremost of which would be the learners themselves. 
this may entail much work in terms of dialogues, capacity development, policy review, policy review and analysis, and development of appropriate or suitable programs and initiatives. However, let me highlight that all this must be considered in the broader context of human resource development, where the higher education sector is part of the actors to make this happen, exactly. together with other actors such as basic education, TVET, uh, employers, uh, and including for socially disadvantaged sectors such as persons with disabilities and the elderly. So over to you, Michelle. Thank you very much for this uh, clarification. Um, I think it's very important when we discuss, and I think today the time is not sufficient, but what I mentioned at the beginning, the complexity of frameworks that we have, we've been working on a harmonized ASEAN education space or higher education space. We've been doing this in Europe as well. And I think one of the dimensions that we face now is, um, well, the impact of the pandemic on our systems, it shows certain weaknesses. We can, uh, we can see the weakness of the system highlighted in every country. Uh, it's different in every country, but we can see it um, through crisis. And my question to you all would be, what do we learn? What, could you name me one uh, lessons learned from uh, the pandemic that you would like to keep um, after all this is hopefully uh, over and, and done. Um, I think this, this would be an uh, important uh, takeaway for, for the audience that we have here from four, four different organizations. Their yeah, view on maybe we've been dealing with a crisis. Um, the crisis is a terrible uh, thing to deal with, but maybe there's uh, a, a silver lining somewhere and that we, we've learned through the and that we can keep uh, for our work on regional harmonization for the future. So I'd like just to ask uh, all of you to comment on that, and that would also be the closing statement for, for you. So uh, who would like to go first? Can I um, just <laughs> ask uh, <laughs> Dr. So Dr. to start? Thank you. Thank you, Mikhail. A very short answer. Um, the, if you ask the only one thing that we, we learn from this uh, hard hitting pandemic is that uh, our universities adapted fast and well. And as a secretariat and, and their partner uh, and other partners should take that in stock that our universities are, are ready to, to adapt. Thank you, Mikhail. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was kicked out of the session by the tech technicalities, so um, I'm back here. Uh, I saw Dr. Ramian, sorry, uh, you, you waved yeah. your hand to, to go, but there was a slight delay yeah. on the session, so I give you the chance to comment now. Right. Um, I think one of the takeaways for us is that we need to be, and we need to adapt very quickly. Um, but then for us as the policy you know, level and also for the higher, uh, higher, in, um, higher education institutions, we have to also disrupt ourselves. Uh, we cannot take long you know, for things to happen. Uh, we have to work uh, smart and quickly. So uh, with your question as well, you know, regarding, you know, how do we collaborate uh, in the region? Um, and I have already started doing that, you know, since I uh, assumed my position, I have already set up the informal meetings with Dr. Sholatit. I have also having an informal meeting with uh, EU chair, Darren, and, and also the DAAD. You know, with that, I think, you know, we can move more quickly and we should meet very regularly to revisit what we mean by harmonization. How do we change things more quickly in order to support the future learning of that of our learners? Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Ramia. And that's very insightful and a very good takeaway, I would say. We and, and something we rely on now even more that we have good networks of uh, people we can work with, even if it's just online, because we we know each other and we can uh, we, we go back in history and that helps us uh, for the future as well. So um, then I would like to ask uh, Mohamed Safir. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have the same point on agility, but I think I would like to add on that 
uh, most of the time people uh, look into qualification as uh, something reactive that mean you have something and then you you call it to assure that you check it but i think they are i think uh, on recent years to be forward looking i think quality assurance need to be more proactive that mean they they need to set the right principle in the very beginning for the institution to be flexible and agile actually so so i think uh, that that would be the most uh, I, i think the, the most forward looking for the quality issue itself uh, not, not for 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 decision not saying that uh, the quality assurance body said uh, this cannot be done but it should be uh, saying that coalition said that Uh, you need to do things rightly based on the risk and you need to be agile as the challenge uh, happen um, anytime, um, any place and um, especially the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohamed. I will remind you after the crisis that we have to be agile when uh, <laughs> we all forget about it again. It's... Uh... But we'll keep it in mind. Okay, Rodora, I would like to ask you to to comment, and then we will close the session. Thank you, Michelle. And just like everybody else in this panel, I agree with the points you raised uh, on your key learning. Uh, but for me personally, I think you know, uh, ASEAN has been talking a lot about you know frameworks for resilience, preparation for you know instances like this VUCA, vulnerability, uncertainty you know, complexity, and uh, we, we all talk about preparing for those. It's just that, you know, this pandemic caught up to us much earlier than we would have hoped for. And therefore, my, my key lesson is really, you know, we have to act faster, we have to invest more, and we have to, you know, strengthen the partnerships even, you know, better this time. Thank you very much. Yes, you can't plan a crisis. Well, normally you can't plan for a crisis, yeah. but... It shows you how well prepared you are. And I think we've all showed uh, this morning or this afternoon for you that we are flexible and willing to cooperate and to discuss and share our views. I look forward to working with you in next uh, year and a half and, and uh, contributing to the development of an ASEAN higher education space. I hope it's a higher education providing added value to the learners, to the um, educational providers to the governments, but also a outward looking high education space open for cooperation with partners, uh, be it European partners, uh, other Asian states, uh, Australia, um, that would be fantastic. And I think really in the spirit of cooperation. So thank you very much for this session. I close it now and hand over back to the colleagues of the share policy dialogue number. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael, and uh, all our, our panelists today. Uh, we're, we're very grateful uh, to you for bearing with us uh, with the, some of the technical difficulties uh, we experienced. Um, to all of those who joined us on, on the YouTube link, uh, we hope Uh, you enjoyed the session and were able to follow it uh, despite those technical issues. So we move on uh, and we look forward to uh, the next day of uh, the Share Policy Dialogue that will be uh, at the same time tomorrow. And we hope you can join us then. So thank you very much.